Now let's talk about a really common addition reaction that happens anytime that a double bond is exposed to aqueous acid. And this mechanism is called the acid catalyzed hydration. Okay, so let's talk about some general features of this reaction first. The intermediate for this is going to be a carbocation. Okay, so that means if you have a carbocation as an intermediate, that means that your stereochemistry has to be unknown. Okay, the reason for that is that if you have a carbocation, that means it could be attacked from either side. So you don't really know if it's going to attack from the front, the electrophile is going to attack from the front or the back. So we don't really know what the stereochemistry is going to look like, unfortunately. Okay? The product, we do know what it is going to be, though. The product is going to be alcohol. Okay? So this is going to be a way to make double bonds into alcohols. All right? Now, because we have a carbocation as our intermediate, we're going to expect rearrangements. Yes, so put a big check mark in there. Carbocation rearrangements happen anytime you have a carbocation intermediate. So for sure, we need to be expecting that. Okay? Finally, the stereochemistry, I'm sorry, the regiochemistry is going to be Markovnikov. Because once again, we have a carb carbocation intermediate that's going to want to form in the more stable position. All right? So those facts weren't that bad. Now I want to talk about one more thing. It turns out that anytime you talk about hydration, you also have to talk about dehydration. Because these are inverse reactions of each other, and they're very highly related. So even if you haven't learned about dehydration yet, that's okay, I just need to mention this and how it's different from dehydration because you are going to see it. Okay, so basically the reagents for hydration and dehydration are exactly the same. So we're going to have an aqueous acid in both of these reactions. So how are you going to know whether it's a hydration or whether it's a dehydration? And it turns out that a hydration is the same reagents except that you're starting with a double bond. Okay. So what that means is that if you're starting with a double bond and you expose it to aqueous acid, you're going to get an alcohol. If you're starting with an alcohol and you expose it to aqueous acid, then you're going to get a double bond. These reactions are reversible. So what that means is that it's always in equilibrium anyway. It's never going to go fully to the right or fully to the left. It's always going to be somewhere in between. Okay. So what that means is that in a dehydration react, I mean in a hydration reaction, all you're going to do is you're going to look at your starting product, your starting molecule, if it's a double bond, you know that your professor wants you to go towards the alcohol side. All right, easy enough. This is actually also going to be the same general mechanism as dehydration. Okay, except it's going to be with the double bond as the nucleophile, not water. Okay, and then finally, um, remember that any mechanism that starts with the words acid catalyzed, if you ever see that, okay, this is going to apply for orgo 1 and orgo 2, okay? If you ever see the words acid catalyzed, that means that it's going to begin with what's called a protonation, okay? That means that you're always going to begin with giving something a proton because you have an acid, and the acids like to donate protons, at least bronsted-Lowry acids like to, okay? And then it's always going to end with deprotonation okay and the reason for that is that it says acid and then it says catalyzed okay those are two big words acid means it likes to donate protons catalyzed means that it needs to get its proton back at some point why because the definition of a catalyst is something that's neither created nor destroyed during the reaction but it speeds up the reaction so what that means is that if my acid gives away a proton at the beginning the last step needs to be that it gets that proton back. That's the definition of a catalyst. All right, and we're going to go over all that. Let's look at the general reaction really quick. I already told you guys that this is going to be a Markovnikov alcohol with unknown stereochemistry. And I also told you that the reagents are going to be aqueous acid. Okay, so even without knowing the mechanism, you could already predict what the end product would look like. Just say, okay, it's going to be a Markovnikov alcohol. That means that alcohol should attach to the more substituted location. And I'm not going to really know the stereochemistry of the end product. That's it. Now, I do want to point out that the reagents can change a little bit for hydration. You're always going to see water and an acid. But that acid doesn't always have to be H2SO4. Many times it will be. Okay, That's actually the most common acid that's used. But we theoretically could use any strong acid. So we could also use HI. HBr. I'm not going to list all of them, but you could use HCl. Other common ones are like phosphoric acid, H3PO4. Okay, 
those these are reagents that you're often going to see, like not as common as sulfuric acid, but you could see these in combination with water. It's the same exact thing. We're just looking for an acid that's going to give away a proton in the first step. Okay?